So this is the BSing with Sean K podcast. I'm your host, Sean Neese. And for those of you who are new listeners, what I do is I interview people that are not living the typical nine to five lifestyle and are pursuing their passions instead. And uh, that ranges from artists, musicians, activists, bloggers, comedians, uh, anybody who's not going along with the mainstream and living life on their own terms. And for this episode, I'm going to play you an interview I did with Elizabeth Shaw. She is a guitarist and vocalist and songwriter. And she has been involved in the metal scene since about 2003. Her most current project she's been involved with is Dreaming Dead since about 2006. And she's also the guitarist of Cretan. As well, I interviewed Marissa, her bandmate, the front woman of Cretan, uh, for episode 25, if you want to check that out. And she talked about her music, but she also talked a bit about politics, because uh, she, you know, she's very passionate about that as well. And she's uh, a huge supporter of Bernie Sanders, and she's been to some of his rallies in Portland, Oregon, where she lives now. And she's also a vegan and very passionate about animal rights, so... We talked about a bit about that as well. Anyway, here's the interview, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Can you see me? Uh, I can't see you. I can hear you. But, uh, oh, okay. Can you see me? I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how to, how to turn that on, but, oh, here we go. Oh, there hey, we go. Hey, what's up? Pretty good. I'm just, uh... <laughs> Enjoying my morning tea here in Portland with my cats. Cool. Yeah, my my uh <laughs> my sister's actually in Portland. Oh really? Yeah, she's uh, but she's. Yeah, what I, part? Um, I don't know. I guess I don't know the different parts. The but... different areas, yeah, the west yeah. side or the side or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah, we're on the. I'm on the west side. Um, kind of a little more like suburbia Portland, but it's nice. It's really really pretty you can see like all the trees and stuff that's mr t oh cool <laughs> <laughs> but I know she, she's done stuff with like the dsa there i know you post about like bernie sanders and they're very like uh the democratic socialists of america the yeah um, definitely like yeah. into that i was at, a, at one of at his rally here in in portland and that was that was pretty intense that was the one where the little birdie flew on the podium Oh, and then that became his logo. Like, yeah. You know, they, yeah. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a worthy it's it's a worthy cause and worthy movement. I don't think I've ever felt this politically, you know, involved ever in any pre- presidential election. But this one seems like one that's important to back up. I mean, I know a lot of people have like different opinions and. You know, they and of course, those should be respected and whatnot. Um, but this is my opinion and I'm I'm OK for having a voice and standing up for it. He's like a change from the status quo and everything, I guess. So, for sure. Yeah. yeah like you know, one of those things that it's like kind of like one of one in a lifetime things where you don't really expect someone to go up and be like straight up and be like, you're totally being lied to. And and, you know, I think it is just kind of like goes hand in hand with now with the era of the you know, of, of uh, you know, the public funding and like the Internet and people being able to being able to be more involved uh, financially and financing all these campaigns and and stuff. So that's uh, I think that's why, you know, we're seeing this now versus where before people I mean, I think people were able to donate in the past, but it was kind of like more like, you know, mailing in a donation versus like where now it's like, boom, instant, instantaneous, you know, like I said, 27 bucks or whatever, 15 bucks, five bucks. So it's, yeah, yeah. I think the convenience of it all is what has really made a change. And people are less uh, 
influenced by the TV, I guess, than the older generations with all the alternative yeah. media and everything. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, it's like you have to be careful because then there's all this information that shows up on the internet too. That you're like, oh, I wonder, like, what is true and what is not, and that should be questioned. You know, we should all have, you know, do the proper research into looking into that kind of stuff and you know, seeing what is true, what is not true, and kind of, you know, have cri- cri- more of like it's important to have, especially now, I think, to have more critical thinking and just to the, you know, to do your, to, to you know to look into it further and stuff versus like sharing the first thing you see. Oh yeah. See, this is, this proves my point and whatnot. And just, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, I get your politics, I guess it doesn't really come out in your music as much though, right? Or is your, your music's more, what is, uh, I guess the lyrical themes of your music and everything. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think, no, actually it's my, my lyrics are just actually very political. Um, to some extent, I mean, in the past as well, with uh, <clears throat> on midnight on uh, bit nightmares on the previous album, we had you know lots of <clears throat> one song was about Katrina um, and how people you know were just completely abandoned out um, out there when when that catastrophe happened and but a, a lot of it is <clears throat> it's just kind of like more like daily personal experiences and how my experiences have been affected by, you know, everything that's happening within my society and what's happening around me and how I've been affected and just kind of finding an outlet to be able to, you know, to, to release all of this kind of like negative and also positive energy. Um, so it's, 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 it's like a, it's a really big mixture, uh, with the latest album, um, this last recording, uh, the lyrics actually had a lot more to do with kind of like a more a, a broader uh, uh, theme in terms of, you know, the world and the universe and how we all are one, in ter- you know, in terms of of like a bigger idea versus just us as human beings on this one little planet and then this humongous inter- universe. So um, I kind of tried to step away a little bit from the political side and and, you know, social commentary. But um yeah, I mean, there's it's it's just been a, a, a like a little a big mixture of, of a lot of a lot of different things, but um, mainly just the struggles that I deal with on a daily basis. That you know, just ultimately, I think translates to everybody's struggles, what they deal with on a daily basis. So, uh, would you say what you're doing lyrically is common for, I guess, the genre you play, or? Um. I would think so. I mean, I think a lot of bands, you know, talk about, you know, in terms of their lyrics, it's, it's pretty, pretty political, pretty, so a lot of social commentary. Um, but, you know, I, I can't really speak for other bands either. I mean, it's really like kind of like a what people say can be interpreted in, 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 or what they sing in their lyrics are about. They can be interpreted in so many different ways. It's kind of like a really kind of like a personal take on or what we think of or what I think about in ter- and you know and of certain themes and cer- certain things um and that's just me just kind of like opening up you know um to to other people to our followers to the you know to our friends or fans and stuff and just kind of like showing more of like a more like a like the the inside of of my brain and like of what I'm thinking and stuff. But, but yeah, I mean, in terms of like how that relates to what other people say and sing and think about within this drama, uh, this genre. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's pretty similar. I think I, you know, I just went to, for example, I went to a drop dead show, uh, out here and they're very, uh, you know, very much involved with, you know, animal rights and, you know, and the singer, he was just like straight up on stage. You know, this one goes out for the ones that suffer in the dark, that are caged up. And I was like, wow, man, this is awesome. Like, that's exactly how I feel, you know, but because of, you know, animals being tortured and factory farming and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so that for me was like, wow, OK, so I'm not I'm, of course, I'm not the only one talking about that. But it's nice to, you know, to hear other people, you know, ha- have a voice and say, you know, 
the the importance of bringing like these kind of subjects, you know, uh, you know, it, to light, uh, to, you know, to, to the general public. It's it's nice to have a voice. And uh, so, how did you first get started with music, and what was it like first playing guitar and everything? Um, I first started playing music when I was six. My uh, I lived in Orange County, and my parents um, wanted me to. To play, you know, they they actually, uh, as as a, at a very young age, they had me involved in, in the arts. I was uh, uh, learning ballet. I was um, a gym, I was into gym, gymnastics, and then um, I think my because because of my 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 germ this, my ger- the German side of my family, my father wanted me to play the accordion. So lo and behold, one day a salesman just showed up at our door in Orange County with these small accordions, and I was like, yay, let's play the accordion. (laughs) And slowly but surely I realized, nope, this is not a very cool instrument. (laughs) This isn't really going to get me in the inn at school. So, (laughs) But uh, but my parents were, my mom was very very strict with me in terms of... uh, uh, sticking to what I had chosen because I chose to to play the accordion and um, and so she made me play the accordion every single day um, and I hated it I just really really hated it which is really interesting because now I just really love that instrument mm. I think it's it's like a, it's just kind of like totally different from like the guitar or the piano and so um, that's how I got started with music um, and then I stopped playing accordion when I was about 12 and I just you know, at that point in time, I lived in South America and I, you know, I just I didn't want to play accordion. And my mom was like, OK, whatever. You know, it's been six years. Um, I'm a, I was a 12 year old rebellious kid. So she was just kind of like, yeah, OK, go, just go do your own thing. Um, and it wasn't until my brother brought an acoustic guitar into the house when I was about 15 years old. And he was like waiting to like Led Zeppelin and the doors. And um, and he was kind of like, you know, playing songs and here and there, and I would be like, oh, that's kind of interesting, and an acoustic guitar, I'm like, oh, I'm going to check this out, and so I picked it up, and the first thing I played was Stand By Me, and I, like, I could play it immediately, I mean, I, I mean, I could, I figured it out, like, like, pretty immediately, and then, um, <clears throat> then I just, you know, in South America, there's so many, like, diehard metal, metal fans, um, and so, of course, I, like, made friends with, you know, a lot of metal, metal people out there who got me into Sepultura, um, into Metallica and, and Slayer and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and, well, and, and also like actually South American, um, uh, metal bands like a criminal, um, and Dorso, which is like a death metal band from Chile. Um, so, so yeah, that's how I just kind of got started that, you know, I was like learning how to play master puppets on an acoustic guitar. Basically that's, that was my first experience <laughs> with guitar. <laughs> And then at the time, I had a boyfriend who was like, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm learning how to play guitar. He's like, you can't play guitar. I'm like, oh, so then it, it's, I'm just kind of like that kind of person who, like, if you tell me you can't do it, I'm like, I'm on it. I'm I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to learn how to do this. And so, um, yeah, and, like, Metallica was definitely my, my biggest, is my biggest influence, and, um is really what what was the was the passion behind my drive to to learn how to play and learn how to play that clean and just you know I, I wanted to mainly play rhythm guitar I had no uh, I had no desire to play lead guitars um, and maybe that comes from my accordion background because the accordion is very much like a rhythmic you know. Uh, versus like a soloing instrument. Um, and it wasn't until like way later on, like maybe in, in 2005 when I joined the Iron Maidens that I really wanted to learn how to play leads and, um, and, and do soloing. And, but still not my, 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 my biggest, my, my, my biggest strength. My biggest strength is definitely like playing rhythm guitar. But, um, yeah, that's, which is still like a good thing, you know, for like, especially musicians that are kind of just starting up, it's important to have like a, a strong rhythmic foundation because a lot of kids that pick up guitar, the first thing, thing they want to do is play solos. 
And so then they kind of neglect this other really important factor, which is like the rhythmic value of, of music. And so it's important to have that, that, you know, really down as a strong foundation to be able to like write and like write properly and to express yourself musically properly. Um, or else you just kind of, it's just kind of like, it's just kind of jibber jabber really. And so what's the scene like in Portland where you are? Is there a lot of metal in Portland or? Oh yeah. Um, well, we, we just moved here about, how long has it been now? Like in October. So we've been here for about seven months. Um, and yeah, there's like tons of metal, metal shows every day. And I would say like every weekend, it's crazy. Um, we're still getting to, you know, know, know people out here and, uh, um, but I mean, there's even like the Portland metal bowling league. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's how I, I think, I think Portland is probably probably the most metal city I've like lived in. I mean, I haven't lived in that that you know that many different so, so many different places. But uh, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of a, a, you know a block a lot of black t-shirts out here. So that's nice. If it's, it's very welcoming, and of course, like the the you know the scenery is 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 really you know caters to to the scene as well. I mean. It's just like really grim and foresty and just kind of like, you know, it's like almost it's about perfect to the perfect mixture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess how does it compare? Like, because you've obviously like you lived in South America and like other places. Like, how does this scene uh, compare like to the different places you've been? Maybe. Um. Well, I, I you know, I haven't lived in South America for like. 15 years. So, um, I want to say that, you know, I think like South Americans just in general, um, uh, and just any, anybody from a Spanish speaking country are extremely passionate about the things that they love. Um, not just, not just in metal, but, but I think, uh, you know, I think people tend to express themselves in a much more, a stronger, more passionate way in South America. Um, and, and so here, little people here, here a little bit, a little more quiet about, you know, about, you know, their, their passions. I think, you know, I'm, I'm not, not trying to diss anybody, of course, you, you know, um, comparison, you know, it's like, if, if you were to, if you if you go to a metal show uh, in South America, it's gonna be like totally just crazy chaotic, and people are gonna be losing their shit like left and right. I mean, I played in Colombia a couple of years ago with this other band that I'm in called Dia de los Muertos, and I mean, people were like losing their shit. I mean, just it was just nuts. Uh, um, versus. The majority, many of the times that I've played shows here in the U.S., people are just kind of like, you know, it takes them a little bit to get into the music, and they're just kind of like a little more reclusive. Um, but, but I don't know, maybe maybe people are a little more jaded out here because, you know, they have, have you know, you can go to a metal show like any day, of, you know, any day of the night. Um, but, uh, but, but, yeah, I mean... All in all, I mean, metal is just like a huge family, and I think no matter what, people are always welcome into like if you're into metal, like they're welcome into like any community metal community, no matter like what part of the country or what part of you know the world you're in. So that's that's always that's always a plus. Uh, and what would you say the metal scenes like for uh, women? Is it inclusive? Is there or do you wish like maybe there were more women in metal or? Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I've, I've always wished that there were more women participating in metal. Um, I wish there were more women actually playing instruments. Um, there's a lot right now. I mean, that a lot of that has changed in the last, you know, 10 years. Um, but there's only like a handful of women that play drums and metal, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot, a lot more guitar players, which is like, like it's fucking great. Um, 
I wish there was a little more support for women in metal as well that actually play music and are in bands. Um, personally, I feel like I, I had, haven't received the support that other uh, bands get, you know, receive in the scene. I, I don't know why. I mean, there could be like a million different reasons why maybe the music sucks or, you know, maybe it's maybe we just, you know, haven't been able to find the right fit in terms of labels and all that. But I, I, I haven't re really felt the love ever since I've started this uh, Dreaming Dead. Um, and I'm not trying to diss anybody, you know, at all. But uh, I feel like there's just there's there's this. Um, there, there have been, you know, some instances that, you know, we've seen some, some help for the band, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, in thinking, in thinking about it <clears throat> also, you know, with the, this whole thing with, um, um, you know, like labels, you know, losing, losing sales because people just don't buy a whole lot of CDs nowadays, you know, because just people just download their their, you know, their music mostly, I mean, people still buy, you know, swag, you know, they still buy CDs and, and, uh, and LPs and whatnot. I mean, it's not a, to it's not the, the business isn't totally dead, but I think that change <clears throat> has really, really made things a lot more competitive. Um, so who knows, you know, maybe wrong place, wrong time, or, uh, or, or whatnot, but uh, but if, if if I were to say anything to other women that or other girls that are you know thinking or about to get themselves you know into into the metal scene is is that or or into music in general is that they need to get into it for the right reasons and the right reasons for me has always been just to write music and to be involved with music and to have a passion for that. Because if you don't, it, it, you know, if you don't have a passion for that, you're just kind of, and you're just getting into it because you want to be cool. You want to be popular. You just want to, you know, or you, then, then, you know, or if you just want to like, I don't know, I don't want to say get laid because I mean, women can just don't really have much of an issue there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I think it's, like important to get into it for the right reasons. And I think the right reason to get into music is because you love music in the first place. And that no matter what struggles you go through in life, no matter, you know, what roadblocks you run into, um, all of those things will be, you know, you, they, they, it won't matter because at the end of the day, you'll have, uh, you, you at least have music. And that's, the, that's the only thing at the end of the day that really matters. I think, you know, I mean, I, I grew up, you know, I metal fit so well, uh, with, for me and with me because I was, you know, I, I, I grew up just kind of like really pissed off, um, about a lot of things. And I don't know why, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and, and so I felt like, and I was, I think it was just mainly because I felt like I was different from other girls also. I, I didn't feel, you know, I think for, for a long time I grew up kind of just kind of like a tomboy, a whole, you know, a, a, a bigger, a greater, as, you know, as, as I was going through puberty, um, you know, I tried to be girly and I think once <laughs> I remember an experience once when I was like a little kid, I was like, Oh, I'm going to try to wear some makeup. And I put some makeup on and then like a neighbor saw me with some makeup and I, I probably looked terrible, but you know, it didn't help that she, her comment of telling me like, you look like a whore really helped because that was just kind of like, Oh, okay, well I'm never going to wear makeup now again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, well, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's not the case these days. But, uh, but I, I, you know, once I like got into the scene, I was like, wow, I, I really feel like this is, this is who I am. And this is, this is where I belong. Um, interestingly enough, these days, you know, because of the struggles that I pre was like previously mentioned, I, I kind of feel like an outsider again. Um, and, it, it, but, uh, but every day I remind myself that, you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter who cares. It doesn't really matter who will accept me. As long as I'm happy with myself and I can accept myself, I will always be one step ahead. So, yeah, so that's so, my that. 
So it's more about, I guess, doing it for yourself than being part of a scene, I guess is what you're saying? Or... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, d- absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it's it's cool that, of course, you know, I'm not going to take the scene for granted. Absolutely not. I mean, it's great to, you know, to make friends and make connections and, and, and there to be like a, a sense of community, of course. You know, that is extremely important in any kind of society, um, that there's connection with other people. But ultimately... I mean, you know, because it is also you're in the business and you're trying to, you know, get your name out there and you're trying to do things for yourselves in terms of like, you know, the the the, the business side of the music. Um, that's all good. You know, some pe- people just play music because they love music and they don't really care to, you know, to, you know, to to, to get out there and get on the label and to have some recognition and this and that um but it's i think first and foremost if you're going to be playing music and if you're going to do this for any kind of like you know uh you, you know for, for any other reason than it doesn't that that's not for yourself you always have to remind yourself that it is ultimately about you being happy with what you're doing and it and it being about the music and to not let that go you know a lot of people are like you know, I see a lot of people online that post things. Oh, I, I give up. I'm selling all of my equipment. I'm not a musician anymore. But, you know, it's it's that that's kind of heartbreaking because it's like, then why did you get into it in the first place? I mean, where did the love for your for your instrument go? Like those are things that, you know, that shouldn't shouldn't, shouldn't leave, you know, a person. If you love something, it has to be unconditional so and that goes with also with your personal relationship with with music so um i guess do you are do you ever uh think of experimenting with that uh, with uh other genres in the future or maybe i guess uh using an accordion and a metal song or something like that i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely i i've actually you know been trying to figure out how to incorporate like an accordion into into music um Still kind of working on that, you know, not, you know, not using the accordion kind of like in its natural state, but, you know, just kind of like recording myself playing the accordion and then just maybe just adding some kind of, you know, effects to it or, or, or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely, I, I, I definitely want to try and experiment with that. I tried to do that on the last Cretan album and I sent the, I sent the band like a recording, like, oh, check this out. I was like way into it because it kind of sounded like it was like something from Star Wars. But, uh, I, I, they, I didn't think it was, <laughs> I don't think they, did, they, I don't think they were too into it. So I'm like, okay, that's, it's all good. You know, well, maybe next time. Um, but no, definitely open to that. In terms of like doing other things that from from other genres, I'm actually about to uh, get uh, start working with uh, with a director uh, by the name of, of Thomas Mignon. He's we're uh, meeting up later on uh, next month uh, to talk about uh, recording some covers for a movie he's doing. Um, and the covers are like Smashing Pumpkin, 1979. <clears throat> and um and Jefferson Airplane uh White Rabbit um so uh those are you know those definitely not metal but uh uh things that um things that you know I will be working on uh in the future and pretty excited about doing that kind of stuff um mainly because I don't I don't want to do like a straight cover um mainly want to do like adaptations and I have some ideas um as far as what I'm going to as how I'm going to adapt those songs um and it'll be fun because I I have I'll be working with uh other musicians um uh friends of mine that that I haven't worked with in the past so it'll be nice it'll be interesting it'll it'll be interesting to to see what what comes of that so um, but as far as like starting a, a non-metal band, I don't really see myself doing that quite right now. Although I, 
I have been wanting to join an Oktoberfest band. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. That would be super fun, yeah. actually. Getting in touch with uh, your German side, I guess. Is that yeah, it? yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> like when I play on the accordion, it's just nothing but polka, right? So yeah. like I don't really know how to play anything other than that, you know, that type of music, <laughs> which is really goofballs. But, uh, but you know, it's funny because I play whenever, like, I have people over, whenever I meet with friends, they're like, check out my accordion. And they're like, oh, play, play, play. And I'm like, I play. And it's just like, it's like straight out of, like, you know, <laughs> like, like Lord of the Rings or, you know, Game of Thrones kind of like, you know, just kind of like really like peasant kind of <laughs> music. <laughs> It just brings like a, I just think of it, it brings like a huge smile to my face. But um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> and what's uh, the latest news with uh, Dreaming Dead? And are you still doing any work with Cretan, or is that on hold for now? Um, <clears throat> Cretan is on hold right now. Um, we don't have anything really planned in the future. Uh, there hasn't really been much of any talk of 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 anything that's going to happen with the band. Although I haven't lost hope. Um, the, the drummer, he just, he just had a, had a baby, baby girl last year. Um, so he's pretty preoccupied with that. And, um, so, but you know, who knows? You, you never know. There, 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 there might, something might come, come of it later on in the future, hopefully. Um, but as of now it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty much on hold. Um, as far as Dreaming Dead goes, we just, you know, we finished recording an album last year in November, um, and we've been struggling with the mix. Um, the, the, essentially the band has been through two different, uh, engineers and so far nothing has come of it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so it's been extremely frustrating. I mean, this one's, this one's been a tough one. Um, there, there has been there was a death within within a, a family member within the band um, during the during the process. So that that really made things a, a, you know a lot harder for us to focus and to move forward. So we kind of had to put the the whole process on hold. So therefore, you know, uh, causing additional delays for you know for for, for obvious reasons um, <clears throat> and. Um, but next week, I'm finally working with a third engineer, um, and it's so close to being done. I, I want to say, like, within the next couple of weeks, we'll finally have uh, a release date and then finally be able to start moving forward with an actual with the actual release of the album. Um, in terms of, like, how it will be released, we decided just to do kind of like a digital release versus pressing the album um unfortunately we couldn't find a label to back us thus you know my comment about me not feeling the love (laughs) (laughs) um but you know i you know i i choose to look at it in a positive light and the positive the positive turn that i choose to give it is that I won't be pressing CDs that eventually are just going to end up in a landfill. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, it being a digital only, maybe in the future, maybe we might press it depending on how the sales goes. Um, but, but for now it'll just be available like on that, on that, on that platform only, um, which is better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so how is a uh, dreaming dead's, sound developed over the years and how would you say the latest music you've recorded uh compares to the earlier music you made um so the 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 the, the earlier music uh we wrote was just kind of you know kind of stripped down kind of bare bone um and then that was with the first album you know i was just kind of like getting a feel of you know in what direction I really wanted to take take the the, the music, um, very melodic, very you know just kind of just really basic in my in my head or 
with the experience that I have playing music, I felt like what I was writing was just kind of basic. I mean, other people might, you know, of to people with, you know, different other playing skills might, might think differently. Um, <clears throat> but that's how kind of like how I felt, you know, the, the kind of like the rec- the direction that we, you know, or the, the starting point for the band. Um, then with the second, le- with the second album, um, I chose to go in a little more of a, you know, kind of like really shake things up and make, you know, and, and step aside from like, um, you know, just the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the clean, the clean guitar breaks. And, um, I, although there are just a couple here and there, I I think we were trying to really experiment with more of like doom elements. Um, and we were just, just really sticking to the thrash, but really like pushing the death metal uh, limits on the second album. Um, <clears throat> with this third album, I want to say we were just because I, I want to say almost because of my experience and and the and the 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 the, the, the nominal writing that I did with uh, with Cretan, I was trying to actually push like more of a like a grindcore um, element into. A grindcore element in, into the music, um, so it's it's really just kind of like evolved into this experimental, you know, thing on a on a regular basis. Um, for this third album, we have a, a a a new guitar player, um, and he introduced a couple. He wrote a couple songs on the album, so. We, you know, there's there's also that element um, that has been incorporated. I try to also kind of strip down the music a little bit so there would be kind of like more, a little catchier, a little bit so people could so people could understand and where the music was coming from, and so people could be a little more involved with the music. <coughs> but interestingly enough. Um, when I presented the, the album to one one label, um, that was not the feedback that I got. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> in the end, it doesn't really matter what other people think. I think uh, I think uh, I think in the long, uh, in the it, you know, in, in the grand, you know, in the the, the bigger picture is that that we're very happy with what um, what we've done with the recording that we've done, um, and we've pushed our own limits, I, I, I think, uh, in, in terms of performance and in terms of creativity. We also got our, uh, our bass player from um, our manslaughter days because before we were called Dreaming Dead, we were called Manslaughter, um, and that was a completely different lineup, except with the drummer. The drummer has always been a constant in this band, um, and Mike, Mike and I have been writing music together for now almost 10, 10, 11 years, um, <clears throat> but um, but back then Mike and I we before we were Dreaming Dead we were Manslaughter and we had a different lineup and the bass player at the time uh, at that the bass player in that band is now our our current bass player and he's back you know he's 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 back on on stage and in the studio with us um, and he's just he's just incredible I mean. When we lost him back in 2006, I mean that was that was tough for me because he was like an integral part in the band. And then, then we found Juan, who was in the band uh, with us for 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 several several years, and and it was great having Juan. Juan is such a great bass player, and of course, you know, he was also an integral part of the band. Um, but you know, things changed. Life, life priorities in life changed, and we we had to to part ways. And um, my 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 fiance Leon, he was in the band for a quick minute, but then that didn't work out, so I kicked him out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, so now uh, uh, Will Will Toledo, he's he's in the band now and he's done such an amazing job on the album. I mean, I think that was like one of the reasons why we like have delayed the mix as well, because we really, really wanted his, his part to really just really come out through the songs because what he wrote and what he's playing are, is that good that there, it made no sense to like bury him in the mix. So, 
Um, so we're almost there, slowly but surely. <laughs> and what would you say, I guess, is uh, the ultimate goal with uh, your music and everything and your dream of where you'd one day want to be? Oh, that's a good question. I've, I've, I've never really um, asked myself that. I think, I'm, and I, maybe I haven't really asked myself that because I feel like I've achieved most of the goals that I've wanted, wanted to within this band. But, I mean, <clears throat> I think the current goal is to find a way to continue, continue doing the, this band. Um, mainly because now that I've relocated to Portland, um, <clears throat> you know, the guys they're in they're in LA, um, and we have not rehearsed ever since I left. Um, so it's you know the idea was to is to continue doing the band, of course. Um, so, but, but it's kind of proven to be a little bit difficult. I mean. You know, it's funny because with the drummer, we're like, no, you know, we'll keep doing the band, you know, like Napalm Death does it. And then we're like, yeah, 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 that's right. Then we'll do it like that. And <laughs> then, you know, it's like, but we're not anything like Napalm Death or at anything at that level. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I think uh, <laughs> you know, we don't have like promoters like you know knocking on our door to like play their fests and that kind of stuff so um so yeah so not so much like the napalm death guys <laughs> but uh <clears throat> um yeah i think i think that i think that's really like ultimately the, the current you know the, the the current goal is for, us to, for me to continue the band um with the guys with the current lineup um, and so I, I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to do it. Um, but at the same time, I have to be realistic as, as in terms of what can be done. I mean, I know there's the internet and there's all that, but, um, a part of me in, in, you know, as of recent, um, feels like I can't be six, seven months without playing in a band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so if, if we're not able to like really find a way to continue doing the band, um, you know, we might have to just kind of call it a day or, or not. And certainly that's not the case right now, but you know, I, like I said, I mean, I'm optimistic, but I also have to be, you know, realistic in terms of like what can be done and what can't just simply can't be done. Um, and then just kind of like move forward and work with, with what I, what, with what I can work with. <laughs> Uh, so before, uh, we wrap up, this is, uh, a little bit of a different topic, but, uh, how did, uh, what can you say about, uh, being a vegan and, uh, your beliefs about animal rights and everything and how that developed and has it come out in your music at all or will it ever? Or... Um, yeah, for sure. So, um, the, the whole vegan mentality <clears throat> was actually born through, through uh, or I I adopted that mentality through Mike Mike and um, Mike is in a, a, a dreaming the dreaming dead drummer he um, he has uh, another band called Exhausted Prayer and I'm good friends with with all those guys and you know they are they're all uh, a lifetime well not li not lifelong but but pretty much ever since they were like you know in junior high or something they've, they've been vegans all all four members <clears throat> so you know when you hang out with a bunch of vegans for so long you just kind of like think about you know what the priorities are and you 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 know thanks to them really it was my my eyes were like open to to something that you know you just you, you're not aware of you know but now of course with the internet of course that's that's changed a whole bunch um I was vegetarian for a really long time and then I gave up on being vegetarian and I went, you know, full, full, full blown back into being a meat, you know, a meat eater. And then it wasn't until like two years ago, I just woke up one morning and I think I saw for the millionth time, like one, another just horrific, you know, uh, a video 
um, of animal cruelty. Um, and I just had it, you know, I was just like, that's it. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't consciously go and continue eating, you know, eating something from a, such a malignant source. Um, and it wasn't so much of, you know, and of course, like the main thing was about, you know, animal cruelty and the brutality that they, that they suffered, like right now as we speak, you know, um, <clears throat> but it also had, it had to do with like an environmental factor, the impact of, fam of, of factory farming um, does, you know, to the planet and, you know, as a whole. And then that was just like, you know, yet another added you know, element into my, with, to my decision making. It was like, you know, I can't support this either because look at what it's doing to the world and what it's doing to the future, you know, of our children and, and whatnot. And then a third factor was my own health. I felt, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, I just didn't feel good. <clears throat> and so, um, so much mentally, um, and so much physically, um, so it was just like a, I don't know if it's a word, but it was like a triple whammy. And I was just, I woke up, I was fed up and I was tired of it. And I was like, I, at, at the very least, I mean, I know there isn't much I can do. I know I can't go and like go knock on the door on some politician to make immediate changes, you know, but what I chose to do was something instead of complaining about it all day long, I chose to make a, a, a conscious decision for myself and say, at least this is what I'm going to do to contribute to, to, to the change. Um, and then talk about it. And, you know, I know a lot of people like they want to talk shit and I put stuff online and like, Oh, I'm tired of vegans, you know, telling me about their opinion. Oh, and <clears throat> you know, and this and that. And, you know, if you're going to stand up for anything, let it be something that's worthy. And I thought standing up for this was, you know, a, a, a worthy, a worthy thing to talk about and to bring to light to other people and to younger minds, you know, that, you know, that are also making decisions of their own. And, you know, again, going back to the idea of having critical thinking, it's important to, you know, to, to, to just, you know, question things and, and know where things are coming from and knowing the sources and, and so I think making the change into becoming a vegan um, has been has been quite, you know, quite a, you know, a, a good step towards how I feel about myself. I feel I feel better about myself. I, I can wake up in the morning and be like, again, you know, this is a person I look at myself in the mirror. And this is the person I can accept because of the changes that I've made in my life and because the conscious decisions that I've made in my life to improve the world that surrounds me. And I think everybody should, should really like think twice about those things. So was it difficult making the switch at first or was it pretty straightforward? I guess? It wasn't that difficult because I already, you know, um, I had already been a vegetarian for a really long time um, <clears throat> prior to being a vegan. Um, so it's, you know, it was really, it was really as easy as just going on onto the internet and just looking up recipes and looking up information as far as what I could eat. And then, you know, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't good about, uh, looking into, uh, proper nutrition until, you know, up until recently, but, <clears throat> you know, that's a, very, a super important factor that you get, you know, the right amount of nutrition that your, your body requires when you make that kind of dietary change, um, but it wasn't hard. I mean, you know, a lot of people, their, 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 their minds are just so fucking like mush. They can't even like think about like anything other than what they see on TV, the burger that the new burger that McDonald's has or whatever is like, okay, you know, just kind of like sheep and going into the slaughter. It's like, I'm just going to eat this because this is what the media is feeding into me. I mean, there's like so many resources and so many other things that you can you know, do and like prepare yourself to, you know, you know, so it, it, the only thing I think the, to, to make the switch is to, to have a certain amount of preparation. Um, you need to be able to think from, you know, okay, what am I going to eat tomorrow? And then just kind of like, you know, organize yourself and be resourceful. And that's what it really comes down to. And then if you're able to just do, do, do that, you can find a million different things to make for yourself. Um, and <clears throat> you have to be into cooking, 
you know, to a certain extent, but even, even, even you don't, but not, not, not to like the, the greatest extent to it because you can go to a supermarket and it's just kind of just opening your eyes to like the different options. Um, not everything is just cheese and meat and eggs, you know, there's a lot of different substitutes and, and you just have to be open to, to making a change. Um, and not just, you know, just like, just be stuck in this comfort zone because that's all you grew up and you know. I mean, that's just like with anything in life, you know, if you're willing to step out of this box and try something different in your life, you, you, you'll be like, shit, this isn't so bad, you know? Um, and it's, but, 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 but ultimately I think switching from, you know, be from meat eater to a vegetarian back, that, that was, that was difficult because I still, you know, had, a, I still craved, you know, <clears throat> eating steaks and chicken and all that. Um, but it, the craving hit mostly when I was hungry. But as soon as I satisfied my hunger with like this, this other, you know, this non, you know, the, with this vegetarian or with a vegan option, the, the, the craving would end. Um, and so every time I had like a craving, I would just, you know, remind myself, like, I just need to get some food in my belly and I'll, and I'm all good. And then, and then that's, you know, and then it's just kind of like, uh, really training your brain, um, to, to, to make the change. And it's, again, it's at so many levels. It's such, it's so worth it, you know, um, env environmentally, emotionally, and, and physically, uh, for me, it was, it was, it was a positive thing. And also my, uh, Leon, he, my, my fiance, he, um, he's definitely not a vegan. Um, but because of the change that I've made, he's kind of like turned into a part-time vegan. And just the other day, you know, for an example, he tried, he made himself steak for dinner and, you know, and I, and I don't judge him. Of course not. You know, he, he sometimes like, no, I'm not going to make a steak in front of you. I couldn't do that. I was like, it's okay. Like it's, it's not about you so much as, as it is about, you know, the decisions that I've made for myself. I mean, you can do what you want. I mean, you know, I'm not going to judge you. Um, but he went ahead and made, you know, he went ahead and made himself a steak and he's just kind of like chewing on it. And he's just kind of like, he just, he didn't like it. And it was really interesting because for so long we've been having din vegan dinners. He's been having di vegan dinners with me. Um, and he prefers the vegan, the vegan meats that are available like at your local supermarket freezer. Um, Gardein being like the, 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 the most popular one here in our household. Um, and so it's, 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 it's really, it's really interesting how now he, prefers like the, the, the vegan meats versus the non-vegan meats. Um, and of course that brings a smile to my face, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's a good, it's a good thing. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I highly encourage other people to just, you know, not, not to like completely, you know, uh, you know, uh, disregard the, the, the diet. I mean, even if you make small steps, you know, make, make just Monday, make your Monday meals all vegan and then just follow through with your other you know, diet, the dietary choices throughout the rest of the week, you know, but, um, <clears throat> um, but yeah, you know, just, it's, a, it's all about, you know, having, having the will to step out of your comfort zone. And if you're able to step out of your comfort zone and, and, and no matter what you do in life, you'll, you'll be, you'll reap tremendous reward for opening yourself to something new Versus continuing something that, you know, may, may or may not be what you really want in life. And that's good you're living let live about it because I feel in a way that that, that actually <clears throat> is more effective than being very dogmatic. Because when vegans are very forceful with their beliefs, I think it turns a lot of people off because, you know, they don't like being judged for their own choices. Yeah. But if, you know, you just do your own thing and you're not judging other people or telling them what to do, I think they're more open to listening to your side, you know, or, or seeing or maybe trying out being a vegan or a vegetarian, pescatarian, whatever, because, you know, um, and I, I think that goes for any view, you know, that's the way to go about it. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, nobody wants to be judged, you know, in, in anything. Nobody want you don't want to like, um, you know, and and I don't, you know, I I don't certainly go around like judging people, but I will have a voice, and and when people ask me, you know, I will say something. I'm not gonna just stand, you know, stand in a corner and not like, you know, just just not just kind of like hide myself and 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 not like have an opinion towards it. I mean, I think with anything people, you know, with anything that you stand passionate about, you should have a voice and you should say something and you should push for change that for worthy change. But it has to be in a way where, you know, you can connect with people like at a personal level. Like if you're just going to diss somebody and just judge them because of the choices that they've made, then you're not going to get anywhere like that. You know, there needs to be you need to you know, we're all different. We need to. And if we want to and we need to accept also people for their differences. I mean, we're you know, we're you know, human beings are just like such a we're such complicated animals. Um, and we just have like so many, you know, different ideas and different values and whatnot. But I think the one thing that makes us the same is, you know, our, the way that we can, that we, we are able to connect with, uh, uh, with each other at a personal level, no matter what language you speak, no matter where you come from. I mean, if you're able to connect with them, you know, like in a, in a, in a way that, you know, where you're both on the same level on something, then, you know, there, then that, then that's like a starting point. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, but, you know, I still post stuff online and I, and I try and stay away from like, you know, posting, you know, like the super brutal, you know, like, uh, you know, those videos that you see from PETA or ASPCA, you know, of like animals being totally just brutalized. I mean, <clears throat> and although those are things, you know, like that are real and that people need to, need to be able to see, um, but I, what I choose to do is like, you know, post like different recipes or, you know, information on, you know, what's going on. Like, for example, what's going on in Chile right now, which like millions of sea creatures just washed up on the shores in southern Chile. And I mean, the, the, the and people out there are like suffering tremendously because of that, you know. Um, and it's just all around the world. I mean, you know what's going on. You just, it's just a matter of like stepping out of, stepping out of your house and realizing what's going on with the climate changes and stuff. And, um, and I think that's, you know, going back to the whole political thing, I think that's why my, I'm so passionate about Bernie Sanders is because he's the only one really talking about that. You know, we need to make some like really dramatic changes about how we view our ener energy sources. Um, so that, that's why, you know, it's, it's all just, it all comes together and it's just, um, and I think it's, uh, you know, one of those worthy things to, to, to fight for. So, um, I guess maybe any advice for other artists or musicians out there who, uh, I guess just want to pursue their passions. Um, you know, what pretty much what we were talking about before uh just make sure that what you're doing is you're doing it because you, you love doing it um and and don't be afraid you know don't make fear based decisions just make decisions based out of out of love and if you do that you will forever feel accomplished and there's nobody in the world that will be able to tell you that you failed because you haven't because ultimately you made your decision based on based on something that you love and that and nobody can take that away from you and uh yeah i guess uh so i guess any final thoughts or maybe just where people can find you on social media and everything yeah for sure um no, I just want, you know, I wanted to thank you, of course, you know, for, for, you know, listening to me chit chat and jibber jabber. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and people can check us out online on dreamingdead.com or you know, on Facebook under, you know, Dreaming Dead. We're, you know, we're all over the internet. We're also on Bandcamp. Um, and people can pick up, you know, download our music there. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, 
hopefully we'll I'll, we'll see people on the road sooner sooner than later um but if not you know uh they can definitely find us online and you know that's 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 where we'll always be <laughs> <laughs> all right cool all right. well uh yeah i think that's uh that's a wrap for uh this interview uh thanks awesome. thanks again for coming on and uh it was good bsing with you yeah yeah for uh, for sure sean thank you so much for you know for having me and um and you know, send me a link too, so I can post this up on our Facebook. If because is it? It's not a. Is this a live stream or no? Oh no, it's uh, it's I I edited it and everything. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I figured because when the, the the connection was going, out, I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, send me send me a link so I can post it up online. Okay, well, thanks for listening to the interview, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good talking to Liz. She was pretty chill. I liked having her on. So anyway, I guess uh, if you want to keep updated with future episodes I have, uh, you could go to bsingwithseank.blogspot.com. Um, there's the links to my YouTube, my Facebook, and my Twitter on there, and also a link where you can subscribe to my feed. And if you want to donate, uh, there's also a donate button. Uh, I should have more interviews coming soon, so catch you next time.